Hello, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about chest x-rays and I'm going to show you my easy way to read chest radiographs, simplifying and focusing on the common pathology seen in primary care. Of course, you can't see x-rays, so what we're really going to talk about is chest radiographs. In school, you may have learned the alphabet approach or others, but here I have limited it to just the most common information needed for primary care clinicians. I teach health assessment and physical diagnosis, and I've always taught students the importance of good health history taking and skillful examination techniques. The truth is, nearly everything you want to see in a chest radiograph for primary care, you could probably identify with a good health history and physical examination. That being said, chest x-rays are quick, easy, and used abundantly, so it's important to know how to do a preliminary read. I'm going to show you a quick and easy method to help you strategically review the radiograph in order to identify the common pathology in primary care. I call this three-step method Peekaboo 432. After applying these simple steps, you'll be able to locate and find pathologic changes on radiographs. Peekaboo stands for pulmonary, cardiac, and bones. The first step of Peekaboo 432 method is to look at the pulmonary structures. The four reminds you there are four areas to review, including the airway, lung fields, hyalur region, and the diaphragm. Starting at the very top, you'll identify the airway. It should be open and midline. Although not common to primary care settings, a tension pneumothorax could be seen if there is deviation of the trachea to the right or left. Then you'll want to look through the lung fields. Normal lung fields have this fuzzy, cotton candy looking lung marking. You'll want to carefully compare right and left, looking for subtle differences in the amount of these markings. An area of increased patchy density, what I referred to as that cotton candy fluffy stuff, can indicate pneumonia. Areas with absent lung markings likely represent an area where the lung has collapsed, called the pneumothorax. If you see increased discrete shadowing or opaque masses, this could indicate tuberculosis or malignancies. Next, you'll look at the hyalur structures. These are the vascular areas next to the cardiac silhouette and look more prominent because of the pulmonary blood vessels. You should see the hyalur notch or hyalur points on each side, usually higher in the left. Finally, down at the bottom of the lung fields, you'll see the sharply demarcated border of the diaphragm, which curves downward to make these angles here and here, called the costophrenic angles. If these aren't present, it most likely indicates a pleural effusion. If the diaphragm border isn't sharp and clear, this can indicate a lower lobe pneumonia. A diaphragm that doesn't have this nice curved appearance and is instead more flattened is common with COPD. Incidentally, below the diaphragm here, you can see this bubble. This is a gastric air bubble, a very common and normal finding. You can see how the structures we just reviewed look very different in this example. Let's start with the airway. It still looks open in midline, but look at the lung markings and the costophrenic angles. The amount of that patchy density or white fluffy fuzz is significantly increased and obscures the diaphragm border and more than half of the lung fields. The cardiac border and the costophrenic angles are also not seen. This patient has pneumonia, pleural effusions, and likely cardiomegaly. Pause now and see if you can identify the abnormalities in this next picture. Hopefully you saw the increased density in what is probably the right middle lobe, but without a lateral x-ray to confirm, it could be the lower lobe. This person has pneumonia. The second step in the Peekaboo 432 method is to review the cardiac silhouette size, the cardiophrenic angles, and the cardiac border. First, you should be able to see and get an idea of the size of the cardiac silhouette. It should be less than half of the width of the chest. If this is enlarged, it usually indicates cardiomegaly from patients with chronic hypertension or CHF. It could also indicate pericardial effusions. Just like the costophrenic angles made from the lung fields and the diaphragm, the angle of the heart border down here, called the cardiophrenic angle, should be clearly visible. If this area is blurred, it could indicate consolidation as seen with pneumonia, pulmonary edema, or CHF. Your health history and exam should help you narrow down the differential. As you review the rest of the cardiac silhouette edges, you'll see prominent, dense, lumpy areas. These are normal and represent different parts of the cardiac anatomy. Although not visible in this picture, it's common to see this on the right side as well from the right atrium and ventricle. Let's look back at this picture. Remember there are three areas to review when looking at the cardiac structures, the silhouette size, the cardiophrenic angles, and the cardiac border or edges. In this picture, the size looks large, although it's hard to tell due to the amount of consolidation. It's obvious the cardiophrenic angles are not visible. As previously mentioned, this patient has pleural effusions, probably pneumonia, and cardiomegaly. For the third and final step of the Peekaboo 432 method, you should focus your attention to the bones. 
scapular fractures are pretty much unheard of in primary care, so I would focus on the ribs and the clavicles. You'll want to follow each bone right to left, up and down, to make sure there's no break. The bone should be smooth without lesions or lighter or darker areas. Hopefully, you were able to see the left clavicle fracture up here. Let's take a look at another picture to see what rib fractures look like. So that's it. Using the Peekaboo 432 method, you'll be able to quickly identify the main areas you want to review in primary care. This gets more complicated in hospitalized or frail patients when the technical quality of the picture, underinflation of the lungs, and different lines and tubes get in the way. Remember though that nothing is better than a thorough history and examination. Even if you plan to order radiographs, having that information will already allow you to focus your inspection of the films. Thanks for watching and see you next time.